If you are going to meet with somebody important, you will be there 50 minutes before time. Dressed to kill and ready to speak because you have been rehearsing and rehearsing what you are going to say. That's what you do with the Lord. We are not dealing with Father God, we are dealing with God. And that's why sometimes, you know, you hear me saying something to you about this and this and that. It's not because I don't like you, because that's what people say. Oh, he doesn't like that. It's because we are dealing with sacredness. Look what the church do for sacredness. Do you know people, what, do, what the church do? Let me dress here. I'm not rehearsing here like a Pinocchio, you know, whatever it is, you know. I'm not on, theater, on the theater. We are dealing with the sacredness. And the church wants us to wear like this. And that's why we are asking you to wear like that. That's why we tell the Eucharistic ministers and the ministers of the, Eucharist, of the, of the world to dress. Because you are proclaiming the word. You have a great privilege. And each one of us have a great privilege to come in the awesome of God. Yes, he is with us there. There is not a box there. There is the real presence. And I think this is what we're missing in our church today. We are missing the real presence of Jesus among us because he is close, we can see him, we cannot touch him, we take him for granted. He is here. And he speaks to us. As St. John Vianney, I forgot to conclude what St. John Vianney said. Before Mass, I speak to God. I put myself in the presence of God. During Mass, God speaks to me. After Mass, we speak to each other. It's the idea of fellowship and coffee and so forth. Because how can I love Jesus if I don't love Jesus through those people who are helping me to come to know Him? This is why Mass is so beautiful. Liturgy of the Word from the beginning of the Mass. Huh? We have a hymn. Sometimes the hymn is not familiar with us. But open the book, at least show interest and try to lift the words. They are so beautiful to make you recollect yourself to come to the sacred. And you are going to see it in a few months, what our bishops have done and what Rome has approved in the, in the Missal. We are going to come more to the sacred. The word the church is going to use is going to put us into awesome of the, of the word. Sometimes the words are a little above you know, the common language. But they are sacred language. We are dealing with God. We don't say, hey God, and uh, please God. No, we are dealing with Him. In your love and mercy and clemency, we bow in front of you. And we plead with you. You're not dealing with me, you're dealing with somebody on the first side. We're dealing with Him, the reality. And then, after the liturgy of the word, when we profess our faith and petition him for our needs, we enter into the second phase of the Eucharist. <coughs> That's why the church asking you to bring the gifts up. Because that bread and wine represent each one of you. Each one of you. And there are people, the collection is not to make me happy on Monday morning that I have enough money to pay the bills. The collection is that you care so much that if God has blessed you, you want to bless somebody else because all that collection comes back to you. Again, back to you. In a way, in a different way, but it comes back to you. Because that's why we are one family. We are now seniors and we are helping those who have children to educate them because three-fourths of the collection is education whether you like it or not we educate that's what jesus said did not go and set go and set it up you go and teach all nations and that's why in that in that bread and wine represent all of you who are coming from the congregation to the congregation Many times the usher said, Father, they don't want to do, do the offering. They don't want to take the offering up. What a great privilege. You have been chosen to bring that bread and wine who a few moments later are going to become the body and blood of Christ. You have been chosen to be the harvester. You have been chosen to be the elect. 
from the congregation to bring that host and that wine to be changed in the body and blood of Christ. Do you ever think of these things, dear people? This is what the church wants us to think. And then after the offering, we assist to that great mystery that the eye of man cannot tell us other and the ear of man cannot hear. We assist at the murder of our God. Do you know this? At the word of consecration, God dies for you and for me. Yes. That's why the priest does not say, this is my body. But he said, this is my body and this is my blood. Donna, you are a nurse. Can a woman, can a person live without blood? The separation of the body from the blood. At that very moment, we proclaim the death of the Lord. And that's why at the Eucharistic prayer, at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, we again join together the body and the blood. When the priest say, by this mingle of this water and hand, by the mingle of this body and blood, may we share in the life of Christ. And you all answer, Amen. Christ who died, Christ who is risen, Christ that one day we expect him to come in glory. Now you see why Mass is so sacred. And they appeal to you as businesses and citizens. I don't know what you do during the week, you know, in the morning, we have 8 o'clock mass. Are you watching the two or on the phone with your boyfriend? I don't know, what, what, what do you do? <laughs> we have the best breakfast in town. He comes to give himself again and again to us. And we say, I'm busy, Lord, see me next time. Maybe I will be on the road next time. We are preparing you for next week when we begin those beautiful 40 hours. It is one of the highest points of my priestly life. When Jesus is on the altar for 40 hours, waiting just for you and for me to get off, you know what, and come and talk. There is no singing or prayers or reading. You and him, the color. The dialogue between you and him, the lover and the loving. And there we begin to be in Namura. You know what the Namura means? To fall in love with somebody. And all of you, I don't need to explain to you how do you get in, fall in love with your boyfriend or with your husband or with your woman that you have today or what or man that you have. You <coughs> run after each other like little puppies. And that's what we need to do with Jesus. Like little lambs we come to him and begin that intimacy. And once that intimacy takes place, you can throw anything at my face. I will never give in. That's what Saint Paul said to the and that's why today, in the word of St. Paul, I say, I charge you in front of God and Jesus Christ to continue to live the scripture, to continue to study the scripture, to continue to guide the people to the scripture, so that you, equipped as you are, as men of God, women of God, will continue to build the church of tomorrow. Dear people, next to you, those young people need guidance. And by virtue of baptism, you as parents said, I am the first teacher in the education of this child. <coughs> Take it seriously and act upon it. That is my message for you. My message is the message of Paul. My dear beloved Timothy, you knew from whom you learned, speaking about Paul himself, 
from your infancy, you are part of the Holy Scriptures. I now tell you, don't be afraid. Continue to be equipped and confident. And if you need to do so, correct, reprimand, and build up. So that all those who look up, for example, they will come to know the Lord Jesus. My dear people, I hope and pray that you study the letters of St. Paul. Because if you know Paul, you know the church, the bride of Christ. And if you love, if you love the bride, you come to love the groom. You cannot love the groom without the bride. Because the bride is the one who teaches about the groom. And what the church do as a bride? Waiting. Waiting for that one day when he will come in glory. So his glory, after she has been clothed with his grace by virtue of baptism in the sacramental life of the church, immersed in the water, immersed in the body and blood of Christ in the death and rising of Christ, one day she will share with him that same glory.